Hello, my bookish friends, and welcome to All Books Book Reviews and our summer of sequels. I am pumped for this. It's going to be fantastically awesome. Whether you're a returning viewer or brand new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping in. Don't forget to like and subscribe for every notification, and I would love to hear from you in the comments. In my previous video, Hours We Regret, I mentioned that I'm having a giveaway on my blog and everything, a huge, huge giveaway. And one way to enter that is in this video right here. And all you have to do is find the image, comment the timestamp in the comments, and then go to my Rafflecopter links, which I have in the description below. There's two separate ones for U.S. residents and international residents. Very important because two different prizes. And then you'll just comment your um, the YouTube handle that you commented on here with. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. It's going to be amazing and I cannot wait to share this one with you. This review is actually a very special one for a few reasons. First of all, this is the first sequel I'm doing on here. And then book one of this, Flood for Refuge, was the first video I did. Next week will mark one year that I've been doing this and I have enjoyed it very much and I hope you guys have enjoyed these as well. Refuge from the Storm is by Christina Hall and she also authored the Moriti Trilogy. This was published March 2022. There are 252 pages, 17 chapters, so averaging 15 pages per chapter and the average reading time is five hours, give or take your reading speed, of course. And just a quick note, if you're new to the channel, you may be wondering why I even bother mentioning about how long the book is or how many pages per chapter. Those are just important qualities in a book for me personally. I like long books occasionally, but I really do prefer short books. I mean, right now I'm reading a 500 plus page book, so I don't have anything against it. I just like short books. And when I'm looking at potential books to read, I do take into account how long it is. I don't know if anyone else does this, but it's something that I do. And this will fit under Christian fiction, dystopia, suspense, and contemporary fiction. Doubts, persecution, forgiveness. Tony Dorrance should be dead, but after months in prison, he's home. Yet, even at home, he's not safe from trials that hit from every angle. Mary Dorrance couldn't be more thankful her brother's home, yet doubts have attacked her newfound faith and left her questioning all too much. When they face a threat greater than either of them could have imagined, will they find refuge from the storm or be overcome by relentless evil? This book was a ride and a half. First and foremost, the Christian content was out of this world, from forgiving our enemies, standing firm in the face of persecution, dealing with doubts. Biggest one that I loved was God being our refuge. And there was such a deeper meaning that went past just God will protect us and look after us. No, in the midst of the storm, no matter what's going on, he will allow bad things to happen. But through those bad things, he is our refuge. He doesn't mean he's going to take everything away. He doesn't mean he's going to just make everything magically get better he's going to be with us through the trials. And that was just so powerful. This book was titled perfectly. And there was one point that just really hit home for me. Tony being home and he was just so excited to get to read his Bible, to hold it and to read it and just to take all the time he wanted to soak in the word. And I'm over here reading this thinking, I've got two Bibles in my room, no waiting. I've got one that's a study Bible that I use just for at home, and there's one I take to church with me that's a bit more beat up. And I can honestly say that I do not have that like enthusiasm or excitement. I know that sounds horrible, but I definitely do take Bible reading for granted. So that has really stuck with me. And this kind of goes in hand with the Christian concept. What would I do in that situation? It was phenomenal. Just like book one, it had that, and this one does doubled on that. Very soul-searching stuff. The characters, again, were great. We have Tony and Mary. There were some characters in particular that made a return. If you read book one, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I was so glad to see them because I had really, really thought their story was not finished, and thankfully it wasn't. Tony didn't name call as much. In the last one, there was a lot of calling people losers and morons and a couple other things I don't remember, but there was a lot less of that, which I really did like. The plot was insanely suspenseful. It wasn't so much as like fast paced and constantly in your face. It was more like waiting for the other shoe to drop. And then when something big did happen, 
had the hardest time setting the book down. There's only one thing I did not like about this entire book. There was an abundance of apologies. From a believability standpoint and how realistic it would be, absolutely. Because Mary was feeling horrible about her past and she's so worried about her brother being in the condition he is in. There's so many bad situations and conflicts and trials. So that is totally realistic. But basing it solely off a reader standpoint, there was a lot to the point that it was repetitive and redundant. So I'm going to give Refuge from the Storm four and a half out of five stars. This is a must read. It's moving and powerful and soul searching and just really, really amazing. If you have started the series, definitely continue it. And as far as sequels go, this was a great transition. There wasn't a huge gap of time between book one and two, so it was very easy to pick up where the last one left off. It's been a year since I read book one. Usually, I like to reread a book before I review it so it's fresh. I did not, and I was a little concerned, thinking, you know, I wonder if I should reread that. But I had no trouble picking up and remembering things. I love a book where you can just pick up and go. Very good continuation. Nice addition. And I, of course, I will be continuing the series. I cannot wait to see where this ends. So I strongly recommend this if you like end of days, Christian dystopian fiction, kind of things like those. This is not a happy-go-lucky or feel-good story. This is more persecution and standing firm for your beliefs and stuff. You can find Refuge from the Storm on Goodreads and add it to your to-read list. It is available wherever books are sold. Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, Kobu, everywhere. And I've included the majority of those links in the description box. Our summer of sequels will continue June 16th. We'll be looking at Unworthy by Vanessa Hall. So if you want to be notified when that goes up, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. So until then, happy reading!